Hello photography fans and welcome to another episode about classic cameras and classic photo gear. So in today's episode I wanted to talk about a slightly different thing. Normally in these segments we talk about cameras and uh, their history and what they're capable of doing. But these cameras come with a host of other gadgets, lenses to be precise. So today I want to focus on one particular lens. Over the weekend I uh, went out to shoot some uh, Kodak film and I took Fed. Oh, where is Fed? Oh. Fed with me. And I mounted, and I mounted a 135 millimeter Jupiter 11 lens on it. Just wanted to take some portraits of the kids, and I wanted to see how this lens performs. So today, we're gonna be taking a look at this Jupiter 11 Soviet era lens. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. This beautiful classic Soviet lens Jupiter 11. This is a 135 millimeter f4.0 lens. This is a direct descendant of a German Zonar and this beauty inside packs four lenses mounted in three groups. When I originally got the lens it was sitting on the shelf for, for about a year before I actually put it on the camera and loaded the film in it. I had other cameras to, to uh, play with, so this lens did not take priority. But last week I decided, okay, it's, let's try it out, see what kind of images this lens can produce. Maybe it's internally damaged, maybe it will not give me good results. I'll show you these pictures and it, you'll be able to decide whether or not the quality is okay. To me, it works perfectly. The build quality is, is really good on this lens. It's, it's not a German um, Zeiss lens, but it's, um, it's still very well built. The only, the only issue that I have with it is that, uh, as you can see, the focusing ring is a little bit loose and that, that actually was the case since day one. The aperture ring moves super smooth, butter smooth, and so does the uh, focusing ring. Nice feature on this lens, and as is the case with a lot of older lenses, and not so much with the current lenses, there's a depth of field scale, and you know how that works. I'm not gonna go into details. It's a really neat thing to have, especially. Um, when you're trying to to see what part of your image is going to be in focus. Another issue that I had with this uh, lens is that the aperture ring was not marked. Uh, the scale was not marked. I mean, scale is marked, but there was no marker where, as to where the uh, aperture starts and, and ends. So I made a little scribe on the barrel uh, with... Uh, with a needle just to just to have a starter mark and it works great I mean for $35 this is what I paid for this lens I don't really care if I put a little scratch on it the glass is beautiful the glass is clean and clear and the lens um, the lens works fine 39 millimeter bed thread mount lens meaning it will work great on your Zorkis on your feds and on your Leicas if you have those now you don't have to have hundreds of whatever dollars it costs to purchase a Zeiss lens for your Leica. But I guess if you have Leica, you have money for, for Zeiss glass. Um, I'm really happy with it. If you, if you ever come across it and you're in the market for that kind of lens, it's a really neat lens to have. This beauty was produced in Matushka, Russia at KMZ, Krasnogorsky Mechanicheski is a void um, and they popped out a gem. You can't, uh, you can't um, 
say anything bad about it. I mean, it, it worked great. It produces nice, sharp images. The only time the image was not sharp was when I actually misfocused or when I shook the camera. I was shooting these images at 5.6 and f8. Uh, at the shutter speed of 1 25th, the ISO 100 on um, the 400 TX, um, a tri X 400 film. This beauty was made in the 60s, and Soviets, since after World War II, they, they took over the whole facility of Zeiss. They brought the, all these um, manufacturing equipment and lenses and ideas and drawings and designs into their factories. They were producing these in the beginning, I, I believe, there were, I read somewhere where. These were actually Mark Zonar, and uh, later they they just left Jupiter 11. So my originally my FET came with uh, Jupiter 8 f 2.0 50 millimeter lens, and this is something I added on. There's a thread mount for your uh, filters, and I'm planning on getting some filters, but uh, just need to find some on somewhere on eBay or, or somewhere else at a good price. Focus and scale on this uh, lens goes from 2.5 meter all the way to infinity. Most of my images were shot up between 3 and 5 meters. Some of the images had issues with composition and that was due to my universal viewfinder and the way I was uh, aligning a shot, of course, with rangefinder cameras, it uh, takes a little bit of practice. Чигары, мы, не плотники, но сожалений горьких нет. Как нет, там мы монтажники, высотники, да, и с высоты вам шлем привет. Трепал нам кудри ветер высоты. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this short overview of Jupiter 11 lens and I hope you like the results that I got from it. And I also started recording videos in my native language, Polish. Uh, first video will be posted together with this video. We'll see how many viewers that video gets and based on that I'll decide whether or not I'll be making more of these. Um, for for the audience in, in Poland or that speaks Polish. So until next time, keep shooting film, and keep the film alive.